Hey guys, a lot of new things just dropped and also a new balance patch, so let's just get over it, right? Let's just directly start. Blast Toys, move upgrade, not sure exactly what that means. Move upgrade is always like a weird choice that they say. Probably more move speed, not quite sure. Mr. Mime, so this is already what happened, but now Mr. Mime's guard sword actually lasts forever on someone, as long as he's in range on allies or enemies. So, showing it right here, quite nice. Confusion got a small nerf. Overall, actually, it's quite decent, like 400 damage late game, you might lose, but yeah. Psychic, getting controls adjusted, haven't quite, apparently you can auto-attack now by using Psychic. Yeah, doesn't really matter much, why Psychic is just, yeah, it needs a bit more than that, it's just like a worse confusion, pretty much. And now, this is shocking, this is very shocking, Cramorant, dive, and I tested this damage, like the patch is already live. He loses 500 damage at level 15, and also dive looks a bit weird now, again, I will show it. And I don't know what that is about. I don't know what they nerf Cramorant. That's not the only nerf they do. They also nerf Air Slash. Cooldown reduction as well. Has now higher cooldown as well. So dive Air Slash Cramorant getting absolutely gutted. Maybe they wrote the wrong character here. It should have been Cinder Ace. But uh, what do I know? Now that's a really cool change. Alone Ninetales can now jump. In Aurora Way, so you, you you actually jump to a location and then you create your Aurora Way there and all your boosted attacks also heal. It's actually quite nice. I really like this change. Um, those are like always changes are like quite interesting. They change the ability a bit, just like Blaze Kick got changed, right? Add some more things to an ability, make it a bit more exciting. And this is, looks quite exciting. I'm probably sure going to try this one out. Lucario finally getting his close combat nerfed again. Does less damage now. Not, not a crazy amount less damage, but you know, nerf is a nerf. And effects on user weaken, which probably means that he heals less as well. He's also going to heal a bit less from it, which is rare. Good, good things. Good Lucario nerfs. I want, I want more Lucario nerfs. I think we all want them. So Greedent, finally. Honestly, I'm so tired of invade Greedent, and uh, this should for sure make it much harder for Greedents to invade. He will get a less shield from defense curl. His tackle has much has a higher cooldown now, so might have it less up. And he also has less move speed, which means he, it will take longer time for him to go to the opponent's jungle, especially on level 1. And yeah, good nerfs. I'm, I'm happy seeing the, you know, Greedon being nerfed for sure. Edogos Cotton Guard effect on user weekend, so less shield. Cotton Cloud Crash, charge rate increased. I think that's his yeah, it's Unite move of Unite. Yeah, Unite move of Edogos got nerfed. Now it will take a bit longer. Interesting. Then we have Decidroy, Spirit Checker, Damage Increased. Couldn't quite check it, I'm not sure, like, so these are level 15 values without head items against the target dummy, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I'm not sure if this is, like, meant as, like, together with this passive or not, so I tried it out and do different things. On melee I did 2400 damage, up range I did 2900 damage, but yeah, it's very hard to know, I'm not, I'm not sure which one, which one these numbers are based off. But it seemed to be, you know, if it does 200 more damage already up close, it's quite nice. Move upgrade, not sure what this exactly means. And knock knock, his damage of Unite move got also increased. And again, I don't know if this is from far away or from melee, so hard to judge the number. Alright, the Aura Void Switch. I actually tried this out, and it does like 20 more damage. I don't know what this change is, I feel like they sometimes just roll a dice on what to buff and change. So, this does around like 20 more damage or something, and... Yeah, I don't think you pick Void Switch for dealing damage to begin with. So, I, I don't know what this change is about. Quite interesting. Um, Trevenant, more move speed. Wood Hammer, now you lose a, less HP when using it, which is nice. It also stuns longer. And Pain Slitted, effect on opposing Pokemon strengthened. Not sure exactly what the change is here. Pain Slitted is a very weird ability. Yeah, not sure. I mean, I guess, I, mean, I feel like Treven Trevenant should just in general not lose HP for using his abilities, I feel like. Except for Curse, because Curse is like, you know... It makes sense that by cur it just makes sense for the ability curse that you actually lose HP. But uh, Wood Hammer and the other abilities, he should not be losing any sorts of HP, especially Wood Hammer. I think they should just completely remove it that he takes self damage. Serena gets more stats. Drop Kick does more damage. Doesn't really matter much. The bigger up, the bigger change is Stomp. Stomp does a decent amount of more damage now. We might try it out in my game. Serena has been pretty lackluster lately, um, so for sure something I might try out. And then we have Hoopa. No, we have Gengar first. Gengar is getting a boosted attack increased, and he also gets more stats per level. So, yeah, maybe see some more Gengar. Gengar's boosted attack getting increased is huge because he has so many things to reset his boosted auto attack, right? 
Dream Eater gets you two boosted auto attacks. Every single Hex gets you boosted auto attack. So this getting buffed is for sure a huge damage increase to Gengar overall, because he can use two, three, four boosted attacks very, very fast. And yeah, that's a decent buff for him. And then we have Hooper. Hooper is just getting... Oof. Hooper is getting a lot of nerfs. Shadow Boy does around 200 less damage. The proc as well does less damage when you proc the, you know, the effect Shadow Ball has. Then we have Hyperspace, now has a two second longer cooldown. And basic attacks of Unbound deal less damage and also Hyperspace Fury, the stun, you know, also does less damage. So those are pretty heavy damage nerfs on Hooper, which I kind of agree with. I think Hooper in general did a bit too much damage. If you guys saw me play Hooper, I pretty much top damage every single game as Hooper, always 80, 90,000 damage pretty easily with this build with Shadow Ball and Hyperspace. So no surprise at being nerfed. And I think it's quite reasonable. Might see some more trick now instead as well. Might gotta go more trick myself. Because I mean, I pretty much only played Hyperspace. I was a big fan of it. My two second long cooldown and you know, the combination with this doing much less damage might hurt a lot. And then we have Slow Smoke and then finally Slow Smoke is getting nerfed. But I will show a clip right now. I don't think it's met as much. So the cooldown got lengthened by five seconds, which is nothing, right? I would have liked to see a 10 to 15 second long increase at least. So five second long cooldown from 40 to 45 seconds. And the effect pretty much kind of looks the same. I can't really see much of a difference. I mean, I use it in try mode. But yeah, interesting patch. I would have liked to see a bit more. Cramorant nerfs, uh, I don't know what that is. This is quite weird as well. This is an aura buff. No Cinder Ace nerf. No Wigglytuff nerf. No head items changes. I would really like some more things. But yeah, at least we got a balanced patch. And there's for sure some things I'm going to try out. More Gengar, some Storm Serena. Might try some Trevenant. Might try some more Decidueye again. And Nine Tails. I really want to try this Nine Tails build with Aurorway. And Mr. Mime. I really want to see how Guard Snob is now since it lasts forever. So there's still some interesting changes in here. Maybe some Rapids and Blastoise too that I want to try out. And yeah, that's it for the balance patch. But there's more to come. We also have a League Battle Pass. League Battle Pass for the upcoming Battle Pass in one day. And it's a Sylveon skin. That actually looks quite cute. I like it. I like playing Sylveon too, so not having a skin for this character would be quite nice. It does have not the biggest animation, sadly, but the Unite move looks kind of cool, I guess. Has a cool recall animation too. And I mean, it might be just a bit too pink purple, but yeah. And then also there's a Greninja skin. Pretty basic, you know, the uh, level one skin is always not too much, not too exciting. Some more skins for the trainers, and yeah. But the best part, look how cute Eevee looks, okay? Do you guys see how cute Eevee looks? Look at that cute hat. Oh my god, it's so cute. That's the upcoming battle pass, and this is the prevolution of the Sylveon skin. Then we also have some leaked skins that are not out yet, that will be coming, I guess, in some patch later. We have a Wiggly Tough skin, another Wiggly Tough skin, we're actually getting quite a lot of Wiggly Tough skins. We have a Machamp skin, okay, Biker Machamp. I like it, I like it. We got a, another Gengar skin, pretty basic, and we have an Absol skin. But that is not everything, we also have a Garchomp skin, and that was actually quite interesting, I kind of like it. And we have a Lucario skin, a Faro Lucario, actually very, very cool. But I thought this already is a 2000 gem skin, so it's gonna be another very, very expensive Lucario skin, but it looks quite cool. I have to I have to say, pretty, pretty decent theme. Then we have, oh, this is the Greninja. These are the Battle Pass skins again, a bit bigger, Greninja skin and the Sylveon skin. And I'm actually a big fan of the Sylveon skin. I quite like it. And then for the last thing, we also have an achievement system in the game now, already live. A lot of bunch, different achievements, obtained 10 fashion items, licenses, better things, knockout, opposing Pokemon in a row. And I think it's only tickets though, but you're getting some trophies? Strategy. So we have a bunch of, bunch of challenges, achievements, which achievements are always fun, as long as they don't make gameplay weird, right? Which I already saw, let me see. Achievements type 2. Um, I saw something that I'm not a big fan of, so let's go over it. Right here. In a single battle, knock out a Pokemon from the opposing team by rampaging under the effect of Outrage or Outrage Plus four or more times. So this is forcing you. This is these are achievements I really don't like. Is when they force you to play certain abilities or things just to get an achievement done, right? Because this kind of messes with the game 
a bit because someone that might just be yeah might just have ranking team rank teammates who are like oh i want to get my guard chomp up or i want to get my outrage up right and they're just going to play some outrage to get the achievements done besides that i think achievements are a good good thing i really like achievements in games it's something you can play for but yeah i really wish they, they, it shouldn't force you to do weird things right but yeah overall we guys guess we're getting a slow like start of a progression system and you know what i don't mind but so far it seems to be like only tickets which i mean would be nice for a lot of players I don't really need more tickets. I already have quite a bunch. But yeah, that's it for this patch, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.